moving on. So the first story we're going to talk about this week is um, to do with sort of virtual reality. Um, is that, Rob, are you, are you looking forward to virtual reality? Do you think it's going to be fun, big, when it comes out? It really is fun. Um, yeah. yeah, it's going to be pretty big. So. I mean, one thing we should say is that we are a bit biased here. So, like, in the room <laughs> with me, I actually have... So, we've got... This is, like, a Gear VR. So, this is, like, Samsung's virtual reality device, which works with the S6. At the moment, I don't have an S6, so it's just, like, this placeholder thing inside it. But this is pretty cool. You look at the lenses. It's currently paperweight, but... It is pretty thin as well. It also comes with a strap... Um, and as well, for anyone who's been sort of following virtual reality, we've got an HTC Vive headset as well. So there's actually a Vive in the room. Do you think, do you think people will like what will people look like in VR? Can you imagine people doing Let's Plays like this, where they're just sat there like playing a game with this headset on and trying to talk as well? They already do. Do they do that already? <laughs> yeah. The, the people who put themselves in the bottom corner of their YouTube videos, they've already got some, uh, some VR ones on the go. And yeah. it looks as good as you do now. I always end up, get, end up getting VR hair whenever I try this stuff on, but it is pretty cool to like walk around in and stuff. Have you got? Are you gonna get an Oculus Rift, Jack? Do you think? Yeah, I definitely am, especially now that I know I can. Yeah. <laughs> I, I backed Star Citizen really early, and that's uh, really that's my main attraction. Yeah, huge sci-fi fan, and uh, that game looks to be the end of my real life. And yeah. I figure, you know, let's go whole hog, VR it up. Definitely, I think. So, if you haven't guessed already, our first story today is about the Oculus Rift. Um, so, this week, virtual reality company Oculus have stated that the GTX 970 will be enough to run every game on the Oculus Rift store and for the CV1 headset. So, if you're not aware, the 970 was released last year um, and around September, and it currently retails around £250, which is about $380 and about €350. Euros. Um, so, saying that this will work across all games is quite interesting. So, it seems like Oculus are really taking... Um, the route of making sure it's almost like a console where people don't have to upgrade their hardware all the time. It is quite nice to know that you know we won't have to upgrade graphics cards for every different game that's coming out. But I think that also with that, there could potentially be some challenges for developers. Um, so the Oculus CEO has actually said, um, this isn't going to be the console five, six, seven year life cycle. VR is going to move fast. It's going to move. It's going to innovate and evolve really rapidly. So... I think one of the things with VR now is, you know, we're going to see these first headsets coming out, but there is going to be probably quite a bit of iteration across the hardware. So, um, so my first question to Rob, really. So, you know, as a as a developer, um, you know, what do you think that having the same specification for all across all the games, how will that affect uh, game developers? Um, I mean, I think developers already prefer creating things for consoles for that reason, is that you know from the outset how much you've got to work with. You don't need to worry about different quality options. Um, you can just try and squeeze as much power as you can out of the system you know you're working with. But um, you, you kind of need that for VR because what you need to remember is you're rendering everything twice, essentially, in, in like a simplistic term. What you're doing is you're taking the game, you're splitting it to two screens. So you're rendering everything twice. So all of your draw calls are being doubled. All of your vert counts are being doubled. Um, so... You, you can only get half of the quality out of a, a VR game normally if you want it to run on the same spec as what a, a standard game would. Um, so having those sort of set criteria will definitely help, again, people get used to squeezing the most out of a certain certain platform like that. So, so the 970 now is about a year old uh, as a graphics card goes. Um, do you think that that's enough power, or it's good to have that for a year, or they should have maybe picked something you know, more powerful? Um, it's strange that they've used that term, or that they're making that claim that it will run anything on on their store. Uh, yeah, I don't actually know what's on their store at the moment. I've been trying to find it, but there's no real information. Um, but I mean, we we obviously work with VR, and we're using systems much much less powerful than something running a 970, and it works fine for for a lot of the stuff. It's it's just keeping in mind the the extra limitations you're going to get with them. Um, so yeah, I mean, even though it's been out for a year, I think there's plenty, plenty of stuff you can still do with with those those cards. Yeah, and uh, Jack, sort of as a consumer, as someone, I guess you've not, have you tried VR yet properly before? No, I haven't at all. Never had the chance. Um, it's behind quite a big paywall to someone like me. I think you know, I don't, I can't just walk into sort of, you know, work and like try something out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> Sorry, it's just been brought a coffee and she's just trying to hide. 
<laughs> <laughs> Show her to the world. <laughs> Um, and so I've been aware that uh, I'm not probably going to be able to enjoy it properly until it's been launched and it's in the market. Um, so I've just I've been happy with that. You know, I, there's going to be a lot of bugs and problems and stuff, and I don't know enough about the technicality of it to help. So mm. I but I want to be a part of the first wave. Um, that's partly why I upgraded my computer was in hopes that it would be enough for when it did come out. So so looking at your graphics card, I mean, you have a 970. So that basically means you're going to be able to play all the virtual reality games that come out. Um, like, what do you think the reception of it will be? Do you think it will, you know, do you think people will rush out and buy them if they got the right hardware, or do you think people will wait? I think the retail price they said, they haven't said officially yet, but it's potentially going to be around £300, maybe a bit less. Um, uh, well, I've spoken to, you know, lots of my friends about it, and, I, you know, I know gamers and non-gamers, and m the gamers almost all say, yeah, it's awesome, I can't wait. VR is amazing, but then people who don't play games, it, a lot of people I speak to, it scares them. Like uh, one of my friends, he loves you know being outdoors, and technology is not really his thing. And I've shown him some games, and he's really appreciated them. You know uh, things like Amnesia, and um, I showed him the Oculus stuff, and he was genuinely really upset by it. And he said, I don't like it; that it's gonna take people out of the real world. So I yeah. think the biggest hurdle that VR has to reaching new consumers is the stigma of it, of this, like, oh, you know, we're giving up on reality and stuff, <laughs> um, which I don't agree with, personally, but... I, th no. I, th I think it's, um, you know, it's like a different way. I think the thing for me is, you know, with VR headsets now, so if I'm playing a game, I'm, you know, I don't know how bad everyone else is, but I have a phone in my hand, you know, I'm watching something on TV, maybe. I've got, like, four different things on at a time. And with a VR headset, you really have to, like, immerse yourself inside. Like, you can't put on the headset and check your phone or do something like that. Um, I think the reception is going to be, you know, quite interesting to see whether it does take off initially or whether it's, you know, just like another Connect, uh, basically, which came and went. I think I think there's more traction to it than that. I think there's definitely more uh, scope for VR. I don't think it's going to come and go away, maybe like Connect and uh, PlayStation Move and all that technology has done. But um, yeah, I think it's definitely it's definitely interesting. To, it'll be interesting to see next year what the actual reception will be and how many people will look at. But like as well, like you know, you just look so cool with it on, don't you? I think, like, I don't know. It's pretty terrifying, isn't it? This is like people, something out of the Twilight Zone. The, uh, yeah, most people in the chat have disagreed with you there, Tim. <laughs> what? Do I, well, fine. Yeah, you look cool. I think yeah. someone said you look like something from the 1980s earlier. Yeah. Which I think <laughs> pretty spot on. This headset, even though it does look quite heavy, it is actually really surprisingly light compared to it. And this is um, so as well to point out, this is actually a development kit. So the uh, one that actually does come out will be. You know, a, a lot lighter than that as well. I think. Ooh. People are saying as well that being constantly dragged into the action is kind of weird, and I think that's an interesting point. Is that some games are designed to be sit back with a controller and not pay attention. So I think, um, you know, it's going to be it's going to work for a very specific type of game. It's more like narrative-based stuff. I mean, yeah. you've seen a lot more narrative-based games come out like that. With uh, what was that one that was like Heavy Rain, for instance? Yeah. And um, you know, like MGS, for instance, is another great example, cutscene heavy games. You know, having an Oculus where you could properly look around the scene and take in, you know, details would be incredible. I think what people overlook is that the Oculus isn't another platform. It's, it's just another peripheral. So in the same way that you don't buy <coughs> a steering wheel plug it, like, set to play first-person shooters and action games, you know that you buy a steering wheel to play your racing games because that would be what they're best used for. You're not going to buy a VR headset to play puzzle games or 2D side scrollers. You're going to buy them to play something immersive, something maybe first person or whatever uses or developers are still trying to find what what best suits virtual reality. Um, some people are saying over the shoulder camera perspectives are really good for VR and I just because you get a kind of god mode feel that you're, you're overlooking things rather than just always resorting to going first person but yeah it's just a case you want to remember that it's a peripheral not a not a console or a new a new platform as such I think I think I do partly disagree with you and disagree with you a bit I think because of the way games have to be made for virtual I mean you can't just sort of take an existing game now and put it into it the games you know with the mechanics you know with a headset on you can't look at everything everything is almost completely different 
um, to how you would uh, to how people have made games in the past. You know, with different, you know, with more visibility, being able to look around more. There's really, you know, a completely new perspective you have to take to game design. And if you do have an Oculus yeah. Rift, you go on Oculus Share now and play the games. Like, there's not that much good stuff on there. There's a lot of stuff of people trying to make stuff that's quite cool. But generally, it's uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's like the top notch or the type of games people expect to see yet. And that's why it'll be interesting as well for me because there isn't those like typical games that um, always make money. And uh, sorry, like all the big titles like Assassin's Creed on launch, and it's going to be now, and it's going to be interesting to see how yeah how it how it takes off because you know I can't see myself buying one unless I can get Assassin's Creed and all stuff like that on it really. But um yeah, I think we'll see how it goes. Well, Rob, I wanted to ask you a question because you yep. said how it's um it's a peripheral more than a platform, and that my question with it is I I'm scared like because people are talking about it in chat as well, and I've felt the same as that. When the motion controls came out for the consoles, it felt really gimmicky. And then yeah. the way and uh, you, people could think, you know, people and my friends would talk about it and say, oh, this would be really cool stuff they could do with it. But it just came out as, you know, really gimmicky. That everyone was just trying to copy each other and get the peripheral out. Um, do you think that's going to be a problem with VR with a lot of companies just pushing something out to copy what's coming out? Um, yeah, I mean, some of the worst experiences I've, I've tried on different... VR headsets have been the ones where they've just dragged something they probably already had lying around and went, oh, we can put a VR camera on that and that will work, and it doesn't. It's, it's terrible. Um, you definitely need to make sure you've got the correct design. And what you want to do is if, if you're going to make a VR game, I think you want to try and think of what the VR headset will offer um, over what you wouldn't normally be able to do, rather than just trying to see if yeah. a previous product would fit into the headset. Um, but yeah, I, I think to begin with, I think with anything, it's going to be like um, a trial phase, isn't it, where people are just going to dump stuff in and try and jump on the bandwagon. So it is very likely, unfortunately, that's going to be the case to begin with. And I, th I think we're seeing it a bit now. So yeah, I think one of the things that Tuzanuk said in the chat is that um, how effectively you know it's going to be implemented in games, and that is going to be the fundamental part. Is, you know, are there going to be games that you want to play in VR? And, you know, are people going to be able to adopt it well enough to the point where people will want to actually play than just uh, yeah, like a gimmick, like iToy, where you have that one cool like mini game thing, and then it all just sort of disappeared after a bit. Well, but, I yeah. personally think it needs to be like used as a platform as opposed to in a peripheral, because I think. For VR to work, it really needs to be its own media in a way. Like it really needs to, because I, you know, like Rob was saying, certain games won't work. But I think if you really sat down knowing, oh, this is going to be seen through a goggles. This is going to be, you know, not necessarily um, observed in the same way on a flat screen. And you designed your games in a more 3D way, so everything around you was interesting, and you could go around and explore that. It could develop into its own medium in the same way that games and films can be similar and different to each other. VR could be its own genre, in a way, of media. And I think that would be the most interesting for me, is to see what that could do by putting people into the experience directly. It definitely is. From the VR sort of people, developers that sort of we've spoken to, I think we know as well, like it is a completely new medium, and that is the challenge now, is to get you know how best to use that and how it's going to be used in the future. And I think that's one of the things that um, it's just going to take time to do. You know, We're not there yet, but you know, next year... You might get a bit closer, but uh, yeah, we can try and predict the future. We'll see. I want VR to take off, but uh, yeah, it depends on the games, I think. Like you were saying, so i5 for an Oculus Rift as well. The i5, which I think is quite accessible. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of, lots of games I know have i5. 970 is fairly high end. I, I really splashed out for my card. That was something I put my money into. Yeah. But I, I was actually quite surprised by it. I think a, a lot more people are going to be able to run it, but then. Is that going to be a problem? You know, because you want to include as many consumers as possible, so it to take off. But at the same time, you want it to be as high end as possible for the tech to develop properly. Yeah. So, like, do you guys think that that an i5 is like too low? Because, um, or do you think that's absolutely fine? Um, it's like a balance, isn't it? So you've got to get the accessibleness, and you've got to get it out. I think for the initial start, I mean, uh, to, to invest in a virtual reality headset, it's still going to cost you like three hundred pounds or so. I think it's a good trade-off. So yeah, I think the requirements. Yes, yeah, so we've got an i5, eight gig of RAM, uh, yeah, nine seventy or AMD two ninety. It's um, it's not, it's not, it's not something people can't work with. Um, yeah, I mean, even looking at all of our specs, a hundred percent of us have an i5 or above. Um, yeah, you wouldn't expect. The VR 
experience to really work on a laptop, and I, I can't imagine the only reason I bought, for instance, an i7 is because I found it at the same price as the i5 at the time, just because it was a OEM model. Um, I, I can't imagine there are many people coming back to an i3 at the moment um, when they're building a rig or buying a PC, and if they are, I can't imagine that they'd want to be trying VR or having that in mind that it would work. So I, I think that's, yeah, I think it's a fair specification to to hedge on. I think some of it as well is actually less than Star Wars Battlefront's uh, requirements, which is interesting, which we'll get on to. Yeah. <laughs> 